Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's worship service. Concerning this day, our readings during November speak of the end times. Paul says it will come like a thief in the night and urges us to be awake and sober. Jesus tells the parable of the talents, calling us to use our gifts while we still have time for the greater common good. In a world filled with violence and despair, we gather around signs of hope, eager to welcome the good news of Christ coming among us. The opening hymn is number 315 in the Great Book.
grace that spring to mind our sin. Our favorite love of God, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we confess, saying, Lord, we are to see. Our favorite love of our neighbors, ourselves, we confess, saying, Christ, we are to see. Our desire for our end of life, we express, saying, Lord, we are to see. May Almighty God forgive us our sins, strengthen our resolve, and bring us to life eternal. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also be with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The reading announcement. Though we do not know and cannot calculate the day of Christ's return, we live faithfully in the here and now as we anticipate the day when we will be given eternal salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon the pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are already children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, drink at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 90, uh, 1 through 8, and then 9, 11, and 12. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, of the land and the earth were born, from AD to AD, our God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years your sight are like yesterday when the past act, like a watch in the night. You swept us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning is the dream of the roses, in the evening is my child and the weary. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities have us set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength of the enemy, yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow. 
Or they pass away quickly and we are all gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to the wicked.
grace be unto you in peace, our Father, our Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Talents, talents, talents. In our Lord's day, a talent, as we no doubt know, was a uh, medium of exchange. It was money, quite a bit of money, actually. And today, a talent is a, a gift, an ability, a capacity to do things maybe a little better than other people do it. We all have talents, all abilities that might surpass those of those around us, but our talents are of a different nature, each one of us, are they not? We're given talents, as our lesson says, according to our ability. Some are talented athletically, uh, we see them on television all the time, these great athletes doing rather remarkable things. Some are talented aesthetically, uh, musicians and so on. We all have our gifts, as I say, and we're called to use our gifts. We should not neglect the gifts that are given to us, but sometimes we have to look deeply within ourselves to discern just what those God-given gifts are. As I say, they're of varied nature. Sometimes we have the gift of being a good listener. Sometimes, if we are incapacitated, we have given the gift of being a cheerful recipient of those who must minister to us. As I say, we have to look within to see where our gift is our personal talent, our unique ability. But whatever our gift is, we must always realize we're to use it for the glory of God. All that we have, all that we are, is to be surrendered to God and to point to Him and show love toward Him. The problem today is, as always, from the beginning of time, as people have the idea that they're in this world for themselves, for their betterment. Many people feel we're here in this, this existence to gain power, possessions, prestige, and all the rest. And sometimes, too late, they realize life is not all about that. Now, so, also, we, in service of God, can gain power and prestige and possessions and so on, but that should not be the goal of life. That's something on the side. We should realize also that whatever our gift might be, whatever our talent might be, we are to remember that God gives us all the strength, all the energy, all the wisdom we need to use that gift wisely and well. Recall the words of St. Paul where he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things are possible with God. Again, we examine our lives, we discern what we have to do for the kingdom, and we know that God will be there, strengthening us to use that gift as we ought to. Now notice in our gospel today that one person was given five talents as we read, and he made five talents more. One was given two talents, and he made two talents more. They had different, amount, different amounts, but they used those amounts well, so it wasn't as if the master was uh, more pleased with the one who made the extra five talents more than the one who made the two talents. They had both used their talents well to double them for their master. And so he says to each, well done, good and faithful slave or servant. Enter the joy of your master. Now if the person who would receive the one talent had made one talent more, I would venture to say that the master would have said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. But what did he do? He took his talent and he hid it. He didn't use it. And that was his downfall. We are to use what we've been given. We're accountable for our lives and for the things entrusted 
to us. Recall I said a few Sundays ago that when I was in confirmation class, the pastor asked us, uh, said to us, I should say, that when we pass on and go to judgment, the Lord will ask one question of us individually. He will ask, what did you do with the life that I gave you? And there's a corollary to that, I would say. The Lord will ask, what did you do with the things that I gave you? The things that I gave you. We are, in this life, ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We are created beings, placed here in this world by God for a purpose, to love and to serve Him by loving and serving Him through others in this life. We work at the pleasure of our Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. And our work is to be given and driven always by love for Him, commitment to Him, faith in Him, and force Him in service of those around us, I say. Success in life should be measured by this. Each day that God gives us, we are successful in living the life we've been given when we can put our head down on our pillow, knowing that we were faithful to do what God had given us and called us to do. Every night we should reflect briefly, very briefly probably, on what the day has brought us and what we did with that day. I always take a little walk around the block and uh, before I go to bed and I think, what did I do this day? What, what did this day bring me? What did I bring this day? I'll call it a day. Our only desire should be to hear our Lord say to us after our life in this world is over the words that the Master said to these faithful slaves Well done, good and faithful servant, enter with the joy of your Master. This is what we hope to hear. We pray to hear, we work to hear, and knowing Jesus Christ, we will hear it. In the Gospel, it ends with the uh, person, the slave who did nothing with the, with the talent, being cast into outer darkness. That sounds very harsh, very cruel, but the point is, and the point that the Gospels are trying to make is that the gifts we are given are very important, not to be treated lightly, and to be used wisely and well. If we put our faith in Jesus Christ, then even if we stumble in life, even if we fall, even if we make mistakes, still we are his servant, his slave, and all will be well through his grace and his mercy. Again, we want to hear and our last day and final hour is coming, as we'll come to you join us. Our Lord say to us, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter with the joy of your master. Amen. The prayers of the church. United into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray for all in need. Eternal God, you watch over all who seek to spread the gospel message. Give them compassion and grace as they embody your love. Be with all bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creative God, you made heaven and earth. Move us to recognize that all things come from you and that we are sustained by your gracious providence. Hear us, O oh God. 
your mercy is great. Merciful God, you are the judge of all. Guide the leaders of nations so that all people might have the necessities of earthly life. Be present with our president and Congress, governor and legislature. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, comfort, sustain, and uphold all who are beset by distress of body, mind, or spirit, especially those we now name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abundant God, you know the needs of all. Be with those who are fleeing war, bloodshed, and persecution for their faith in you. May our hearts be open to those who have lost everything except you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember those whom we have loved and who have gone before us with a sign of faith, especially those most dear to us whom we now name in our hearts. May light perpetual shine upon them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Of God, 
Together. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My eyes have not to see the salvation which you have prepared for the sight of every people, a light for the new nations, and the glory of the people of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for that you have refreshed us with each marvelous gift of life. And we pray that your mercy would strengthen us through this gift in faith for you and in perfect love for one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his sin to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon your favor and give his peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. In 362, 362. 